Community Church. My name is Tiffany. I am one of the volunteers at this amazing church. Uh, I volunteer with our high school youth group and I'm so excited uh, to be bringing today's message to you. So why am I here? Uh, I took Pastor Chris's 10 week uh, or so preaching sermon class and I guess you can say this is my final assignment. So I would like to uh, go and uh, pray with us first before we go ahead and get started uh, in today's message. Dear God, we just thank you for giving an opportunity for us uh, to worship you, God, and to praise you. God, I just pray that this message uh, is for someone today, God, and that they listen to the words that you have prepared for me to speak, God, uh, and that they just open their hearts and their minds to the message that you prepared. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I have a question to start off. Have you ever, like in high school or in middle school, like have you ever played a sport or try, did tryouts? I know I have. So this one year, my 10th grade year, I had this bright idea. I was like, I'm gonna try out for softball, okay? Now mind you, I just said my 10th grade year, I'm gonna try out. Usually when you do a sport, you do it previously, right? Like you do it while you're little and then you progress into high school. Well, I was like, I'm bored. Might as well try out for softball. So three days of conditioning in softball, I was like, this sucks. I was so sore um, from moving and practicing and throwing the ball and running and doing sprints and just trying out. And I got to the third day and I'm like, I feel so out of place. And I remember thinking to myself, like, what am I even doing? Like, I am so afraid of the ball that it's gonna hit my face. Why even try out for softball, right? Like, I felt so unqualified in the moment. And I'm sure like parts in our lives, in our journey with Christ, like, we probably felt like we were unqualified many times too, right? We felt like we didn't belong or we felt like we're just not in the right place. And I think we can relate to that story and think, why am I here? Well, if we talk about, uh, we're going to talk about Moses and the story of Moses. Um, but before I get started, I want us to keep in mind that in the midst of our weaknesses, when we feel unqualified, God displays his ability. He displays his ability and his promise. So we're going to jump into the story of Moses and Exodus. And I want to talk a little bit before we get started about Moses. And before we get to the part uh, where God speaks to him in a burning bush, Moses at this time was just attending his flock, doing the same old thing that he does every single day. And this one specific day, he get, one of the sheep gets lost. He goes and finds a sheep on the mountain and he finds this burning bush. And God is talking to Moses through this burning bush. And God is asking Moses to do an amazing but difficult task. God is asking Moses to confront the Pharaoh to release the slaves of Israel. They're tired. They're weak. They've been praying to God to release them from slavery. And Moses is scared. And at this point in Exodus chapter 3 verse 11, Moses and God are having a conversation and I challenge you today during this message, I'm really going to focus on Moses as a character. I'm not really going to talk about or read uh, God's responses back to Moses, but I want you today or sometime this week to go back and read the entire message of Moses or the entire scripture and passage of Moses, because it is so cool of a story to see how God responds to Moses. So again, Moses is scared. He doesn't want to confront the Pharaoh. It's scary. It's, it's, a, it's a task that's like, this is bigger than me. And Moses is coming up with like all of these excuses as to why he's not qualified to do it. And in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11, Moses is speaking back to God after God asked him to do this task. But Moses protested to God saying, who am I? 
Who am I to appear before the Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? Like me, of all the people that you could have chosen to do this scary task, you chose me? Verse 12, it says, and God said, I will be with you. Like we need anything else, right? Like we need any other convincing. God is asking us to do something. He's going to be with us. And God is telling Moses he's going to be with them. And God continues to say, and this will be the sign to you that is who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship the God on this very mountain. Verse 13, but Moses protested again. If I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, well, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? Right? Like kind of picture yourself in this moment. Like I'm sure there's times where we're talking to God and we're praying and we're, God is asking us to do this thing. And we're like, not it, not going to do it, not qualified. It's uncomfortable, right? Like all these different feelings of emotions and fears. What are people going to think? What am I going to tell the people? Moses didn't ask like, God, what do you think? He had, Moses asked God, what are other people going to think as if we should care? And God and, and Moses continue to have this back and forth conversation. And Moses just keeps making excuses after excuses as to why he shouldn't do it. And God is, if anything, is trying to convince Moses why he should do it. Since when does God ha- when should God ever have to convince us to do something? That doesn't make sense. But as humans, we do it all the time, right? We always push back and say, we're not good enough. If you go down to Exodus chapter 4, verse 1, God and Moses are still continuing to have this conversation and Moses keeps throwing excuses and throwing more reasons as to why. It just keeps on going. Chapter 4, verse 1 says, Moses keeps protesting again. Well, what if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? So now you're a liar. Like, especially back in those time frames, they believed in false idols and all these different things, which we have false idols and people worshiping things nowadays as well. Like what? God doesn't exist. He's not real. And you re- he really appeared to you in a burning bush. Like that is crazy. And Moses is so concerned with the world and what the Pharaoh and what all of the people are going to think. He's missing the point. He is missing the very point of what God is trying to just ask him to do. God has a promise to his people and he needs someone to be obedient to just fulfill it. And God in this moment chose Moses. What an amazing thing. Your God, the King of Kings is asking you to do something. But you keep pushing back and saying, no, what if, what if? I can't, I can't. And if you keep going, it just keeps going on and on. In chapter four, verse 10, Moses is talking to God again with more excuses. Moses pleaded with the Lord. Oh Lord, I'm not very good with my words. Okay. So it sounds like Moses is somewhat convinced right now, right? Just like a little bit convinced, but just not yet. So since He's like, okay, well, God, there, I'll, I'll see if they'll believe me. But now my problem is me. I can't speak. I have a stuttering problem, right? So it says, oh, Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been. And I'm definitely not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue tied and my words get tangled. So God, I stutter. I can't talk. I can't public speak. I'm just, I'm not the one. Why me? Right? Like keep, he keeps asking this question of like, I just don't want to do it. I'm afraid. Whatever the the emotion is, he just keeps making excuses as to why he doesn't want to do it. And I think the very first thing we should lean in on, because we could relate to Moses and maybe there's a, there's something going on right now in your life where you kind of think God is asking you to do something and you keep being like Moses and being defensive and saying, no, 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 not qualified. 
But when you feel unqualified, the very first thing I want you to lean in on is that God has a plan. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is Jeremiah 29, 11, And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. So God's not going to send you somewhere without being with you. God told Moses he was going with him. God already had this plan set out, planned out for Moses. And there might be something that God is pushing on your heart. He's just asking you to be willing and we just keep pushing it off. I know my personal story, um, in 2018, um, I was so depressed and anxious. And for those who don't know me, um, this is kind of my story. And I kind of talked about this a few times, um, but I struggle with anxiety and depression. And for the first time in my life in 2019, or actually in 2010, uh, I was suicidal in the military. And then again, in 2019, I uh, was suicidal for my second time in my life. And those were very dark times. And I just knew that God had more in my life. I was a on and off Christian. I would have years where I would be on fire for Christ. I would have years where I was like, where is he? He clearly isn't here in this room. He is in this place. I can't find him. But in 2018, I was in and out of church. And I just remember a few times just praying for God on my knees, just begging like, God, just use me for your purpose. That is all I'm asking. Like if you are real, if you say who you say you are, if you are the I am, if you are the king of kings, Like, I'm just asking you, like, use me for the purpose you created me for. And I would just keep saying that prayer over and over again. And it just felt like over time, like nothing was happening until I was at a church one time and they're talking about going to Kibera, Kenya, one of the largest slums in the world. And I said, I'll go. Because I felt the Holy Spirit telling me it's your time. You want to go somewhere? You want to do something that's bigger than yourself? Here is your moment. Wasn't attending this church at the time. I have never been out of the country. Canada doesn't count. I've never been out of the country. So this is my first time out of the country by myself with a church I'm not attending, with a group of people I've never met. I figured I was in the military, already signed my life away. I mean, what's, what's the second time going to hurt? And I went. And I know like some of you right now are probably thinking that's too big. That's just not for me. Maybe there's something smaller that God is asking. Maybe he's not asking you to go a thousand miles away to serve in another country. Maybe he's asking you right here to serve in the church. Or maybe he's asking you to go cut an elderly uh, person's grass. Like there's so many different little things that you can do to serve. You just have to listen and really just be obedient to God's calling in your life, especially when you ask him. If you come back to the story of Moses, we kind of see that Moses eventually does listen to God's calling in his life. He eventually is like, okay, God, I'm trusting in you. I'm scared. I have a stuttering problem. I don't know what's going to happen. And mind you, the whole stuttering problem, God provided a way. God provided Aaron, Moses' brother, to help speak on behalf of Moses in front of Pharaoh. So even though Moses made an excuse of having a stuttering problem, God said, okay, I still choose you. Even though you keep coming up with excuses, you're still going to do it. And I'm going to provide you someone to speak since you said you can't speak. God provides a way. And he eventually goes and he confronts Pharaoh and is asking Pharaoh that God sent him to release the people of Israel, to release them out of slavery. The Pharaoh doesn't listen at first, right? Like some of us have already have heard the story of all of the different plagues 
that had to the Pharaoh had to face because he just would not let God's people go. And it just kept getting worse. The plagues kept getting worse. There was all different kinds of plagues, frogs, uh, locusts, right? Like the firstborn uh, was killed, right? And there's just all of these different things that kept progressing to get worse. And eventually the Pharaoh said, let the people go. So now in this point of the story, The Israelites were freed from slavery, like glory to God. They're free. And they get through the city, they get through town, and now they come up up against a roadblock, right? So maybe you're in this journey where maybe you did say yes to God, but now you're at a point where you're facing a roadblock and you're like, okay, I already didn't want to do this in the beginning. I'm ready to throw throw the white towel down now. And now you're facing a roadblock and you're like, seriously, God, you, you just freed me from this. I answered the call. And then now I'm coming across this. They come across this Red Sea. They didn't bring boats with them, right? They didn't bring oars and and things to get them across the river or across the sea. Well, God had a plan. Remember Jeremiah 29, 11, God had a plan. So he knew that these people were going to come across or come up to the Red Sea. And in Exodus 14, 29, it says, But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground as the water stood up like a wall on both sides. So let's pause there for a second. Think about when you go into the ocean, you go into a lake, right? And when the water, when the tide is low, you see the sand that's still wet from the water the day before, the night before. Well, this says that there was dry ground. So they come across this Red Sea. The Red Sea parts in the middle and the the water stands up like walls and the ground is dry. (laughs) That is how amazing God is. So the ground is dry. There's no mud. They don't have to worry about tripping or dragging any of their, their luggage across the way. God provided dry land for them to get across the Red Sea. Verse 30, it says, that is how the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. And the Israelites saw the bodies of the Egyptians washed up on the seashore. And when the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before God. They put their faith in the Lord and his servant Moses. Like just imagine being present and just seeing the mighty power of Jesus. And even though we weren't here during the story of Moses, I'm sure there are moments in your life now where you have seen these miracles, where you've seen these these God moments and you're like, there is no other question. Disease just all of a sudden disappeared. Money just somehow showed up. It's not a coincidence. I believe that God provides a plan. He provides a way when you put your faith in him. The second thing I want you to lean in on when you feel unqualified is to know that God is trustworthy. He is trustworthy. No matter what circumstance you're in, no matter what journey or path you are in, he is trustworthy. Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Now let me tell you something. I get it. I have been single for a very long time. And there are moments, especially when the world, I listen to the world, where I'm like, God, I don't believe in your promise anymore. I don't believe it's true, right? Like there are times that you're just like this, I don't, I can't believe your promise. I struggle with your promise because I have yet to see it. Or maybe it's something that's going on and you've ate healthy your whole life. You work out, you eat healthy now and then all of a sudden, boom, cancer. Or maybe you're very good with your money. You tithe every single week, if not more than 10% and all of a sudden you lose your job and now you're back in debt. You're like, God, really? I've been faithful to you. I'm having a hard time believing in the promises that you speak. 
But God isn't asking you to question him. God is asking you to trust him. Because maybe you needed to lose that job to find a better one. Maybe this time in your singleness, God is using you for his purpose. Right? Or maybe during the disease or the cancer, God is using your illness to show somebody else his kindness and grace and to lead them to Jesus. We don't always have the answers. We are never going to have all of the answers. But we do need to trust in God's plan and his promise. If you come back to my story, I talked about being in Kenya uh, in 2018 for the first time. And during this time, I was an introvert. I never prayed in front of people. I let alone never preached in front of people. I was super afraid to just get up in front of people. And one, one day in Kenya, they were like, hey, we need someone to volunteer to be a part of the prayer team. We're going to open up the clinic and we're going to let the locals come in and we're going to assess them for medical needs and we need people to pray for them. And I was like, you know what? I'll do it. I'm in Kenya. I asked God to use me. I can't back down now. I'm already in it, right? So I go and I said, I'll be, I'll be a part of the prayer team. Well, then they threw on us. They're like, hey, so you also have to like preach a little bit. You also have to like share a story and kind of tell these locals in Kenya why we're here. And I was like, Jesus, this is not funny. Like, this is not what I signed up for. I've never preached in my life, let alone prayed in public. Uh, there's a language barrier between English and um, the language in Kenya, right? Like, I, back to Moses. Like, it's just, I don't know what else to do. Like, I guess we'll figure it out. So for the very first time in my life, I prayed in public. And I even preached my very first sermon in Kibera, Kenya, in the middle of the slums to locals in Kibera. And I preached on the prodigal son. And I remember just standing there after the first wave of people went through. And I got done uh, talking and preaching and praying for these people and their needs. And I heard the Holy Spirit just tell me, like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And I felt that that's what I'm this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But my immediate reaction was no. No. That was uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. But I remember back to when I asked and begged God to use me for his purpose. No matter how scary it was, no matter how dangerous the situations were, I had to walk by faith and not by sight. In that very moment, in 2018, when I went thousands of miles away to Kibera, Kenya, and I just said, yes, God, send me. I went through obedience, preached for the first time. And because of that, that is why I'm sitting here today in 2022. You've got to listen. And God's probably asking you right now to do something. Whether it's small, whether it's big, or bigger than yourself. You're like, God, I don't know how. And God is just saying, trust me. I will use you for the very purpose I created you for inside your mother's womb. The third thing I want us to lean on, the third and final thing, is when you feel unqualified, just remember that God designed you for a purpose. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So just like the story of Moses, God knew that he heard the cry of the Israelites. He heard them begging to get out of slavery. 
He needed someone to fulfill his promise that he said he was going to do for his people. He sent Moses to face the Pharaoh, to free the slaves. What is God asking of you? What is God asking you to do right now? That you're leaning in on your fear, your anxiety, your depression, addiction. Maybe a marriage is collapsing. Maybe it's time to get some help. Maybe it's time to lean in on what God's promises are. But maybe you're standing in the way of them. It's hard to, a hard pill to swallow. Thinking that you are in the way of the promise God has for you. But I want you to remember that in the midst of your weaknesses, God will always declare his ability. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for loving us in the midst of our weaknesses, God. We love you so much for loving us as many times as we keep running away from you and then coming back. We keep questioning you, God. We keep questioning your ability. We keep questioning whether or not we should trust you. We keep questioning whether you are real, whether you exist, God, whether you're going to get us out of these issues that we are in, let alone the issues we put ourselves in, God. Maybe the same issues you told us not to do, but we chose to do them. God, I am so thankful and we are just so thankful for the grace and the forgiveness that you consistently pour out onto us, no matter where we are at in our journey, God. There isn't a love better than that. And God, I pray that those that are listening, I pray that if there is something that you are asking of them to do, that they don't wait another moment, another second, God, that they just say, yes, God, send me. Use me, God, for the very purpose you created me for. Don't wait. Because we can trust you. We know you have a plan for us, God. Because in the midst of our weakness, you will always declare the power of your abilities. And God, I pray that if someone doesn't know you, that again, they don't wait, waste another moment, not trying to figure out who you are, but just says, yes, God. I want you in my life. I want you in my heart, God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. God, I just pray that you continue to lead us. And then when we look at the world and when we get distracted with the plan that you have set us on, God, I pray that we keep so focused on you that we forget about everything else that's around God that distracts us. God, I just pray that as we continue through this week, that you guide us, encourage us, and love us. Because we need more of you and less of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for taking the time today to listen to this message. I hope it encouraged you. If you have further questions or if you want to get connected in our church, make sure you check out our UCC app. Uh, we would love to get connected with you uh, and get to meet you. Thank you.